Hello, good day everyone. I am Eunice J. Malacaste together with my partner Yanusha Felusika. And for today's discussion, we are going to enlighten your minds about Western Visayas or Region 6. For the first and third part of this report, I will be the one to discuss it to you. Then followed by Yanusha Felusika for the part now let's begin. Western Visayas is officially designated as Region 6. It is an administrative region in the Philippines occupying the western section of the Visayas. The total land area of Western Visayas is 12,828.97 square kilometers and is bordered to the north by the Cebuyan Sea and northeast by the Visayan Sea, east by the Guimara Strait, south by the Iloilo Strait and the Panay Gulf, and west by the Sulu Sea. So as you can see in the map there. So its population as determined by the 2015 census, it was 7,536,800. 383. So this represented 38.90% of the overall population of the Visayas Island Group or 7.46% of the entire population of the Philippines. So in Region 6, we have six provinces, namely Aklan, Antique, Negros Occidental, Capis, Guimaras, and Iloilo. We have also two highly urbanized cities that makes this up, which is Bacolod City and Iloilo City. And by the way, Region 6 is the home to the world-famous beach of Boracay, which is in the coast of Malay. So we have 117 municipalities and 4,000 51 barangays So these are the cities that make up Western Visayas region or also known as Region 6 We have Roja City, Iloilo City, Pasi City, Bacolod City, Bago City, Cadiz City, Escalante City, Himalay Himamaylan City, Cabancalan City, La Carlota City, Sagay City, San Carlos City, Silay City, Sipalay City, Talisay City, and Victoria City. The history of Western Visayas. So, Region 6 was created from Aklan, Antique, Capiz, Guimaras, Iloilo, and Negros Occidental by Presidential Decree Number 1 as part of the Integrated Reorganization Plan of President Ferdinand Marcos. So, the province of Palawan was transferred to Region 6. Then, the Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, announced in June 2005 that the transfer had been completed. However, Palawanians criticized the move, citing a lack of consultation with most residents in Puerto Princesa City and all municipalities but one preferring to stay with Region 4B. So consequently, Administrative Order Number 129 was issued on August 19, 2005 to address this backlash. So this order directed the abeyance of Executive Order 429 pending the approval of an implementation plan for the orderly transfer of Palawan from Region 4B to Region 6. Because of that, Palawan is still currently part of Region 4B. So on May 29, 2015, by President Pinigno Aquino III, the province of Negros Occidental and its capital, Bacolod, were both removed from Western Visayas in order to form the Negros Island region along with Negros Oriental. But it was later regained with its capital, Bacolod City, 
back into Western Visayas on August 9, 2017 under the presidency of Rodrigo Duterte and revoking the executive order that was been issued by President Aquino. So the languages native to the inhabitants of Western Visayas are Hiligaynon, which is spoken in some parts of Iloilo, Negros Occidental, Guimaras, and Capiz. Capiznon, which is spoken in Capiz. Kinaraya, spoken in Antique and parts of Iloilo, Capiz, and Aklan. Akenon, spoken in Aklan. Malaynon, spoken in Aklan. And Cebuano, which is spoken in the northern parts of Negros Occidental and its municipalities and cities which are facing Panyon straight towards Cebu. Thank you, Eunice. So, at this juncture, let us all proceed to the context of Hinilawod. Um, Hinilawod is an epic which is it's more on heroic and legendary adventures. And here are the elements of the story, but first, we'll be discussing the characters. So, I have here Alancina as the goddess of the Eastern Sky and the wife of Dato Paobari, Captain as the king of gods, Dato Paobari, a mortal and a mighty ruler of Hollywood and husband of Alonsina, Macleom Satuan, the god of the plains, Suklang Malayon as the goddess and guardian of happy home and the sister of Alonsina, Labaudungon as the eldest son of Dato Paobari and Alonsina, Angoy Ginbitanan as the first wife of Labaw Dungon from Handog. Manalintad as the monster that was killed by Labaw Dungon as, pa, as part of his story. Abyang Durunuon as the sister of Sumpoy, the lord of underworld, whose beauty is legendary and also the second wife of Labaw Dungon who lived in Tarambang Burok. Sikai Padalugdog is a giant with a hundred arms. Malitong Yawa Sinagmaling Diwata is the third prospect of Labaw Dungon and the young bride of Sergnayan. Sergnayan, on the other hand, is the lord of the darkness. Asomanga is the son of Angoy Ginbitanan. Abyang Baranugon is the son of Abyang Durunuon, and he defeated Sergnayan and won his father's freedom. Humadapnon, the second of the triplets, who was angry at what happened with his brother, so he wanted to take revenge. Puyong Matanayon accompanied Humadapnon, known for his foreign his skills and swordmanship. Piganon is a seductive sorceress. Dato Umbao Pinaumbao is a ruler of Piniling Tubig, and he was giving his daughter for marriage. Burigadang Pada Sinaklang Bulawan is the goddess of greed. Duyong Makabigting, son of the mighty Dato Bala Balahidyong. Dumalapdap as a third of the triplets. Lubay Lubyok, hanginon si Mahayog ha Mahayok Huyukon is the maiden, maiden that humadap non chasing. Balanakon as the two-headed monster who guarded a narrow ridge leading to the place where the maiden lived. And lastly, Uyutang as the bat-like monster with sharp poisonous claws who fight with Dumalapdap. Now, let's proceed to the summary. There is a sky goddess named Alancina. Many gods made an attempt to win Alancina, but she chose a mortal named Paobari, the Dato of Halawood. Alancina's choice enraged the gods. That's why they conspired with each other and agreed to hinder the marriage of Alancina and Paobari by flooding Halawood. However, Alancina and Paobari were saved from the flood with the help of Suklang Malayon, Alancina's sibling. Alencina and Paobari returned to Hollywood after the flood. Months after, Alencina bore triplets named Labaudungon, Humadapnon, and Dumalaptap. After they were born, Alencina asked Bungot Banwa to uphold a ritual to strengthen the triplets, triplets, which they did. The triplets walked their own path, such as the case of Labaudungon, 
who was imprisoned by Sir Gnayan after their battle. Labaw Dungun's son avenged his father and once again sees Sir Gnayan and both returned to their home. The triplets went to different battles and looked for their wives. Look for their wives, and when the siblings returned home, the Topaobai prepared a feast for them to honor. And here is the plot of the story. First, we have the exposition or the beginning of the story. When Aluncina married Dato Paobari. And then, followed by the rising action, it is when Aluncina gave birth to the triplets. And then the climax, it's when Labaudungon was being imprisoned by Netsargnayan. And then the falling action is when after every fight of the triplets. And then the denoma or the finale is that Dato Paobari celebrated the return of his three sons. For the settings, we have province of Panay and the time is during historical period. For the point of view, we have third person omniscient, meaning the, the narrator knows all the thoughts and feelings of the characters in the story. And then the author's style is narrative. Next, we have the themes. So there are three. First is value the culture and tradition. Second, personal courage and dignity. And then third, love for family or for their father. And here is the interpretation of the story. So the term Hinilawod translates to tales from the mouth of the Hallowood River. And it is an epic poem already transmitted from early inhabitants of a place called Sulud. In central Panay, Philippines. It is first discovered by ancient in 1995 when Filipino anthropologist F. Landa Jocano became interested in native folklore and then he traveled the hinterlands of his home island of Panay with two colleagues collecting folk songs, stories, and riddles. Now let's proceed to the literary devices being found and used in this story. So first we have the simile. Simile is comparing two things using like or as. So for example, a bat-like monster with sharp poisonous claws. So the bat and the monster was being compared to each other and it uses the word like. Next we have the imagery. So, it is a language used to create images in the mind of the reader. For example, again, a bat-like monster with a sharp poisonous claws. So, it was like allowing the reader's mind to create images through language. So, you know, there is a bat-like monster with a sharp and poisonous claws. Another example for that is that they travel through the region of clouds past the region of the internal darkness. Next, we have the symbolism. Actually, as I've searched on the Google for its symbolism, like nothing showed up. So, uh, I just decided to look on my own and here it is. I found flood as one of the symbolism. Which is flawed symbolizes, I mean flawed is a water and then it symbolizes unconsciousness. So it was like being out of their mind because of Alancina's decision that angered her suitors. That's why they were able to do bad things. So the unconscious unconsciousness there is being out of their mind. So it is because of Alancina's decision. That's why... Um, they were unconscious, they were out of their mind, and they are angry. That's why they were able to do bad things. Second is the home. So, you know, the word peace. It was also a mother's womb, which is, it is a space that serves as shelter and protection from outside world. Third is the window, an open window. So it was like embracing and welcoming new blessing. So this is when Aluncina gave birth to the triplets and then it happened that they opened the window 
So it was like embracing. It was like welcoming the new blessing and that was um, her baby. Baby's brother. Next is the mountain. So uh, mountain signifies our dreams, our goals in life. So we need to work hard for it in order for us to achieve those dreams, those goals that we wanted to achieve. This also refers to the maiden's hand, wherein uh, the triplets, um, the triplets need to work hard so that they will um, win the maiden's hand. And then, besides from symbolism, we also have the synecdote. Okay, synecdote. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, but that's how I read it. So, synecdote is the usage of a part to represent the whole. So, for example, to win her hand. So, actually, it wasn't really the hand. But, um, in this phrase, um, the person saying it was really referring to the woman. So, it was like um, the usage of the part, which is the hand, is actually representing the whole, which is the woman. And then we also have the foreshadowing. So it is when author hints at events yet to come in this story. So for example, when the triplets are on their, are on their way for uh, another journey, so it actually means that they're up to another smelling's hand. So in the story, it was being repeated so many times you know, by um, the experiences of the triplets that when they are on their another way uh, or another way for another journey it really usually means that they're up to something or they're up to another's uh, to another maiden's hand so basically the readers already know what will happen the next and then lastly we have the hyperbole so example i mean yeah, hyperbole is an exaggerated statement. Example for this is when after Alancina gave birth to the triplets, they perform rites. Then the window, this is what I have said a while ago, like the open window. Okay, the window and as the wind blows, the triplets transform into strong, handsome young men. So it was very being exaggerated. So another example for that is that only few days after they were born, Asumanga and Abiyang Baranugon embarked to look for their father. So it was so impossible. So how could they able to embark and search for their father, right? If they're still baby and they can't even walk. That's why the same. And lastly, we have the moral lesson, which is true and faithful love shall and always prevail. Deference to your parents and elders will always be rewarded. So, all you have to do is to be true, to be honest, to be genuine. And most especially, we have to obey and respect our parents and elder ones. Because by that, God will bless us more. And He will guide us the right path where we're really meant to be but I'm not saying that you should do this do that because of the reward but you're going to do this because it's from your heart you know it's genuine coming from your heart that you are going to give love without expecting something in return so that's it Ines Malacasa will be the one to report the features of the Filipinos in the literary work so Ines now let's proceed to the features of the Filipinos in the literary work. So first we have women are pressured to get married. So Filipinos have this mindset when someone reaches her maidenhood, the parents pressure their daughters to, you know, get married. The next is courtship or dowry. So it is a Maranao tradition where a man should give something based on what is the demand of the family of the girl before they get married. The next is family relationship. 
So they were helping each other and they believe in the saying that blood is thicker than water. So they need to uh, meet the needs of the family first before others. The next is superiority of men or patriarchal. So men or women are designed for house only. So and the man has the right to rule the their family. Then the last one is the ritual. So it is when Alunsina Sumon, the high priest Bungot Banwa, to perform rites of the gods of the Mount Madias to ensure that the triplets will have good health. So there's a lot of Filipino tribes or cultures who engages to rituals. Or even ordinary people who seeks help to those with so-called mananagna or um, binisaya. I don't know if that's there's a uh, you believe in binisaya. That's what we call it here in our place in Lanao, binisaya, where you're going to meet someone who has the power to you know predict your life and will help you to become successful in life so yes that's it then the last one is in terms of their names they are more likely marano inspired same with the culture that was narrated or shown in the story and at the same time there there is also a mix of um cebuano inspired name and culture of it that will be all. Thank you.